Hello, Internet. Inspired by something that happened at work, I wanted to do some performance testing. Um, as with so many things in programming, there are a million ways to solve a problem. And there's a particular problem that I've seen two different solutions for in two different languages. And I was curious to know the pros and cons of each, especially when it comes to performance, um, in which case we kind of need to do it in the same language. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So let me describe the problem and the potential solutions. Uh, suppose you have a game engine or a web engine, component-based web engine, like Blazor or Angular. You are going to have lifecycle events. So here's an example in Blazor. Um, any of your components will implement component base, and component base has a bunch of uh, virtual methods in it that are that are empty and which you can override uh, to hook into their to the component lifecycle. So lifecycle events will be things like, oh, I've finished um, initializing this component. Oh, the parameters have changed. Ah, I'm, I've rendered it. Um, whatever. All these different events. So we can see in this case, and this is just some random thing I found online. I was looking for Blazor samples, thinking I could find such a thing, and lo and behold, here it is. So here's a component that said, yeah, you know, there's a lot, all these lifecycle events are in there, they're all empty virtual methods, but I want this one, override, on after render. I've got some special things I need to do on after render. Uh, fun pro tip, you don't need to call the base in this engine for these methods because they're empty. They're empty for very good reason. If your virtual methods are not empty, then your developers might forget to call base, and that could lead to all sorts of fun problems. Um, and if you're making your own little engine, I would advise that your virtual methods probably should be empty, or you're going to cause fun problems for yourself when you later want to edit those virtual methods, or you know, if, hook more behavior in there. Like, that's not where you want to be. <laughs> it causes fun problems. Um, so that is one solution to have these virtual abstract methods. The other solution, and this is the what Angular does, and this is um, from my code for my game Poppy Seed Pets, which I guess I might as well link since I'm talking about it. Um, they go the route of saying, hey, I want you to implement an interface. So um, there is no base component for or, or a class for your components, unless maybe it's actually, maybe there is and it's in this component attribute. I don't know, I haven't looked into it that deeply, to be honest, even though I've been using Angular for years, now I feel a little embarrassed. Let's forget about that part. Um, if you want these lifecycle events, you implement an interface. So I say, yeah, I'm going to do stuff when it's inited. I'm going to do stuff when it's destroyed. They also have a like after render and, and, and similar life. I mean, lifecycle events are very similar between Blazor and Angular, which makes sense. They are <laughs> libraries for doing the same thing, component-based view uh, engines or frameworks. Um, so anyway, you say, yeah, I'm going to implement on init, and because I've said I'm implementing this interface, I'm obligated to write the interface, right? So you get the same-ish experience from the developer's point of view of, um, because there are virtual methods, I'm not required to implement them, right? Like in this example, suppose that Blazor, for some reason, all the methods were abstract, not defined, then for every component, I'd have to come in here and say, okay, override, on after init, on what parameter set, parameter set async, right? You'd have to define all of them. That'd be nonsense. So you do a virtual instead. Um, and again, there's the same way of getting the same effect. Only write the methods I want to write. And in this case, we use interfaces. So interesting. We could do it with the interfaces or we could do it with abstract. And I started to think, well, what's the performance impact? Um, I think in my mind, the interfaces feel a little, I don't know, cleaner in a way. Um, but again, I don't know, maybe they're slower, maybe they're faster, I don't know. So I wrote up a little test where I've got a, a simple engine that does both. So I don't know, this is maybe not a great place to start. Let's start by looking at the abstract one, actually. So here's our abstract game state. In a quote-unquote real example, maybe we'd say they all have to have an update method or something, I don't know. And so we've kind of switched context, sorry, in this example, I've kind of switched from a... Um, maybe I shouldn't have done this, from a, a web front-end engine to something more like a game engine where you have like update, get inputs, draw stuff, you know. Um, that's, those are the classic three for a, for a game loop. Um, so, I don't know, I coded something similar to that. Uh, and I said, okay, we're going to make a virtual void draw. Um, you're not required to have anything get drawn. That'd be kind of weird to have it for a game state in a game, but whatever, let's just say for the sake of this. Nothing needs to be drawn. Um, maybe we would require update, whatever. So it's this empty virtual method. And then if you want to um, override it, you do, right? I don't have to have this. It's valid code to take this out. But I would like to have some draw logic, and then in here there would be some draw logic. I'm not going to put any draw logic, because what I really want to test performance-wise is 
that overhead, right? There's overhead in a, in a virtual um, method because if we go now to the engine, right? It says, well, every time I do a, a step in the game, right? I'm gonna update, I'm gonna draw. This is a little unrealistic because these might be uh, less tightly coupled. You know, you might update many times per frame or something. So whatever, ignore all that reality stuff. We just <laughs> what I wanna test is that in abstract game state, we don't know what game state's being passed in. The, 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 does, the code doesn't either, right? So when we call draw on it, there's got to be some under the hood, some way where it says, oh, does it has it overridden the draw method? You know, am I calling it or am I calling the base method that's on abstract game state, right? Am I calling the my game state draw or am I calling the abstract game state draw? Um, somehow at runtime, it's figuring that out. And I don't know what that logic looks like, right? That's why I'm interested in performance testing. Because the way to do it with interfaces, let's jump over to interfaces, is I have a game state. We might imagine that it requires an update. But I also have this drawable interface where I say, oh, if you implement this, right, you're obligated to implement a draw method. So here's my game state. We always have our update method, I guess, <laughs> for a realistic uh, example. But here's our draw, right? And if I took out draw here, I would have an issue because now I'm not implementing iDrawable. Um, so one downside I would, you know, say to this interface approach is it does mean as the developer, if there's like 20 lifecycle events, now you're like, I gotta have on, you know, and suppose this was, um, let's switch examples again uh, and go back to a web framework. You have like on after view, you know, on, you know, parameters, set async, right? You'd have to like do all these silly interfaces and it would be a little cumbersome. Um, but again, but maybe this performs better, right? So, so I want to check that. Um, and then the engine. And this is where you think, ooh, now, now we're getting a little scared. I need to cast this or, or somehow determine, right, does it implement iDrawable? And if it does, then I'm going to call draw, right? So maybe that's scary, uh, but maybe it isn't because maybe the virtual stuff is doing essentially the same thing under the hood, right? Again, this is where I don't know. Um, it also occurred to me as I was writing these tests, oh, in this example, I'm, I'm doing a little allocation. Um, what if I, you know, don't want to? Um, and actually, let me do... You know, I'm curious to do it another way. Let's do, um, let's do a type check. Um, type check. Let's say if type of game state. Ooh, and actually, you know what? That's not how you do it. You have to say like implements. You gotta, no, 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 no. The reflection is gonna be gross. Never mind. I think never mind this example. Maybe I'm missing something, but I'm pretty sure you have to go into reflection town and be like, hey, does this thing, among the interfaces it implements is one of the my drawable. I don't think there's any way that's going to be any faster. So, never mind. Let's not do that. I think this is the thing we want to do. Either we would allocate or we wouldn't. Um, it's interesting that, yeah, the IDE is like, why don't you like turn it into one of these? And it's like, because I want to, you know, it doesn't know. I want to test the performance difference. Um, so, let's do that. So, let's look at what the benchmark looks like. Um, I have. I, and you may have noticed I made these static. That's probably a little silly. Um, in fact, let's make them not static. Let's do some changes on, on the screen. You know, the real the real engine, you would new it up or something. There'd be an engine somewhere, an instance of it running almost certainly. So let's make a private, we'll call it an abstract engine. Um, and that is, we'll call it abstract engine. Um, we'll, we'll also new that up as part of the um, startup and we'll have our uh, virtual engine, let's call it interface engine, I guess. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm confusing myself. Uh, interface engine. And we want to new those up. Why doesn't like abstract engine? Oh, because I'm a, because I don't know what I'm doing. So sorry, it's interface engine, engine. Sorry, abstract, gosh, this is a nightmare. Virtual, why did I choose between, uh, I wasn't consistent between virtual and, and abstract. Okay, an interface engine, engine, there's my interface engine. Thank goodness. Okay, and then we would new these up as well. So let's um, do abstract engine equals new, apparently virtual engine, because I can't be consistent. <laughs> uh, does that mean I should redo this thing? I don't know. I'm not doing it. We're gonna roll with it. Okay, and then here we would say, fine, abstract engine, step, right? The point is, I don't want to new up these engines for each benchmark test. I really want to, um, I, I want to eliminate all that from my benchmark. What I want to know is, when I call the step method, is it faster to call draw on an abstract, where it has to figure out which abstract method it's calling, or is it faster to check the type and draw? And in reality, we might have more of these, but we're, that's at that point we're just multiplying the 
right, by two or three or four, whatever the, that effect is going to be, right? And in the end, it's going to just be more of the same thing called the draw, whatever, whatever the, that method is. So that's the benchmark. Uh, I think I've eliminated all my variables. I probably should have just left it static. Why did I go and do that change? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Let's see what happens. Um, I'm going to pause and run the um, benchmarks because they take a little bit. It's, it's just boring. I would just be yammering for like a minute while they run. So I'll pause now and I'll be right back. I'm back. Uh, let's check out the results. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Um, well, this is fascinating to me. Okay, but, but let's go over them. So somehow in my brain, I was like, man, I bet that interface thing is a little faster. It's not. It's way slower. Um, also interesting to see, um, I was expecting this whole allocation thing. I was like, oh, I don't want to allocate. I should make sure not to do that. Um, let's not allocate a new variable. But it doesn't actually say that anything was allocated in either case. So I don't know if the compiler makes a little optimization. Um, maybe when you saw me looking at this before, you're like, oh, silly Ben, he must not do much performance testing because that doesn't matter. You're right, I don't do much performance testing and it didn't matter. Um, which is interesting to see and actually it's even more interesting to see that the my attempt to avoid allocation actually made it slower. Um, it is worth noting that all these are super crazy fast. Um, and I think if you were going to the example of a web framework, if you're creating and destroying components or, or changing the state on so often, right? You've got to call lifecycle events on your components like so often that these nanosecond differences matter. You're probably doing something really wacky with your like. I don't think what you actually want is a component-based framework, right? Um, so I think for a component-based framework, it almost doesn't matter. They could have done either one, and maybe you go with with uh, whatever's most convenient for the developer. Um, and in C Sharp land, you're like, yeah, abstract, whatever, you know, who wants to list 12 interfaces? Don't make them do that. Let's just use abstract, right? Or maybe they did benchmark and we're like, you know what, as long as we're making an engine, let's make it perform as well as possible. It's like, yeah, it doesn't matter, but whatever, we're making an engine, let's <laughs> make it be good. So maybe they already checked this, maybe they already knew, maybe, it's, maybe everyone knows already that abstract virtual methods are faster than these little interface checks. Um, so anyway, that, that may be, again, talking about web frameworks, this probably doesn't matter. For a game, ooh, there's an argument where maybe it does matter. Um, you, if you're running 60 frames a second, right, you are expecting all of your life cycle events to be called 60 times a second. Um, so, so that difference might, might start to matter more. Or, you know, 60 frames a second, ooh, that's kind of, it's on the low end. Maybe I want my game to go 120. Everyone loves 120 frames a second these days. You know, whatever. This effect will multiply in a, in a, real-time engine like a game thing more than it would for a, a web framework is all I'm saying. So um, I, again, I, or that, again, I'm saying again, but I don't know if I said this before. So I have a um, mono game uh, .NET framework, like a framework on top of mono game that adds a state-based um, kind of engine for making games in mono game. Uh, and I am using abstract for most of my things, but I think a couple I ended up going interfaces for some reason. Um, I'm curious to look again. So partly in my mind, I was curious to know. Um, so there were two things. One, I have this engine and I would like it to be as fast as possible. So this is good information for me. I'll stick with abstract. The other thing in my brain is I feel like abstract is just a little more dangerous to use. You know, like as mentioned, if, if, you're, ab if you're doing lots of virtual methods with, that have bodies and, and you're building these complex inheritance trees, when you go OO on that level, you're almost certainly making a mistake. And so I would, there's a part of me that's like, abstract, get that out of here. I don't want, I don't want to see it, right? But, but I don't know, if performance is, is your issue, then this is what you want. And again, sometimes abstract is just the tool for the job. Um, but, but I like to avoid, um, you know, make the code as readable as possible, reduce the complexity. And once you've got virtual methods, especially with bodies, ooh, things start to get fun and, and complicated to reason about. Um, so I just prefer to avoid them. So I would be really happy. That, that would just be one more thing for me. If interfaces performed better for the solution, I'd be like, yeah, one more nail in the abstract virtual coffin, right, for, for me. Um, but that's not what I got. Abstract is faster. So, you, you know, the, the benchmarks don't lie. Um, and as always, I don't know, if you watch anyone do benchmarking, and I don't know that much, so I'm just repeating what I've seen people say. But it's true. You have to test your particular scenario, you know. Um, and, and you have to think about what, what matters more. Um, does saving two and a half nanoseconds matter compared to 
you know, making a friendly API, developer API for your, for your framework. And in this case, I would say the abstract is actually more friendly, but, but you know, there's other concerns like that. You might say, yeah, abstract would be a little faster, but we're trying, you know, there's something else that we want that's more important than 2.5 nanoseconds, right? So, so everything is, is very context um, sensitive. So, but you've probably heard that a million times. So anyway, that's it. Thank you for going on the silly journey with me. I was really curious to see how this turned out. Um, and I'll put a link to my mono game engine. I mean, I think if you're serious about making games, you should be using Unity or, or Unreal, I guess. I don't know. In my brain, for some reason, Unity is the bigger one, but Unreal's out there. I'm sure it's great. Um, <laughs> Unity is a little better than mono game, uh, depending on who you are. Um, as a solo developer, I find just typing C-sharp code much faster than making prefabs and all, you know, whatever else. And I'm not doing 3D stuff. So, so anyway, if, if you're similarly minded about how you make your games, you just want to make 2D games and you like state machines, um, you can check out my thing. I'll put a link in the description. Um, and uh, my thing called Play Play Mini uses abstracts so you can feel comfortable and confident knowing that it is super fast by three nanoseconds. Anyway, thanks again and goodbye.